Hello there, Sandy Younes from Former Surf once again in this how to on IBMI video set we will take a look at expanding our web services that we created in the previous video. We created a web service with two endpoints. In this video we will add another two endpoints. One to add records to our customer database and the other to update an existing customer. To get notifications of when the next video in this series is released please don't forget to like and subscribe. It is appreciated. Let us get on with this video. Before we start adding new endpoints, I want to spend a bit of time on how we test our APIs. The first two endpoints use an HTTP GET method, so testing these was easy. We just pointed our browser to an endpoint and we got the results back. The two endpoints we will add in this video will not be using a GET so we need a better method of testing. Let me introduce the Postman. Postman is an API platform for building, using and testing APIs. It makes life simple for testing each step of the API cycle. Postman is not the only API tester out there. There are a couple of great Visual Studio Code extensions that work very well. But we have been using Postman for many years and tried the alternatives, but to be honest, we always go back to Postman. Let me give you a quick demo of the Postman. We download Postman from the link shown on the screen. You can use the app from a web page if you don't want to load it onto your PC or you can't load it onto your PC. As far as we are concerned, the best bit about the Postman is the collections. We can group API calls into a collection that is saved. They're always there for us to refer to or use at a later date. Here we can see all my collections. If I expand one, government.uk will do, there is a bank holiday API call. This was used for one of my recent Powerwire articles. Let me click on that. Here we can see the main Postman window. The first drop down we can see next to the address is all the different HTTP methods we can use. This one's using the GET method. At the top, we have the URI we want to call, in this case, gov.uk slash bankholidays.json, a very simple API that gets all the UK bank holidays for a couple of years in the past and future holidays. Let me press the big send button and see what we get back. Not surprisingly, a big JSON string, but very well formatted by the postman. The two endpoints we created in the previous video were two GET HTTP requests. So for testing, we could easily use a browser to test these. But in this example, we'll be using a POST request to add a new record and a PUT request to update an existing customer. For that, we will need the Postman. As we have Postman already open, let me create a new collection and add the two endpoints that we created in the previous video. I'll call the collection QCUSCDT. That name really rolls off the tongue. And click on the link to create a new request. In the address bar, paste in the URI from our API and press the big send button. And all our customers appear in the bottom window, all nicely formatted JSON. Let me save this request before we go on to the next one. I'll call it All Customers. And on to the next endpoint, the individual customer. I'll press the plus sign at the top for a new one. And I'll paste in URI for the individual customer. And again, press the big send button. All looking good. I'll save that one too. Get customer will do. Now we have the two endpoints into the postman that we created earlier and they are still working. Cracking bonus. Let us leave the postman for now and get on with our two new endpoints. In this new endpoint we are going to add a new customer. This insert will use an HTTP method of post which means we would have to use the postman to test it. Our SQL or SQL statement will use parameter markers to insert these details. We will be using a JSON string in the header which will contain all the columns that the customer table needs. 
Before going anywhere near our API, I always make sure I have the SQL SQL statement correct. There is no better tool than run SQL scripts from ACS. So bung the statement into there and make sure everything is correct. This will get rid of, hopefully, errors relating to column lengths, etc, etc. Over to the browser, here I have my Apache admin page open. I'll select the instance, I'm using QCUS CDT, and click the Manage Details button. Then Manage Deployed Services. Then make sure our service is stopped. I'll click on SQL as our service name and press the Stop button. Once it's stopped, press the Redeploy button, so we're going to add another endpoint. As we are performing a redeploy, we have to go through all the deploy steps once again. Step 1. No changes, press Next. Step 2. No changes, press Next. Step 3. No changes, press Next. Step 4. Ah, changes. Here we can see our other two endpoints, the All Customers and the Get Customers. Now press the Add button and give the endpoint a name. Add customers sounds about right. Then in the SQL statement box, press the SQL statement you checked with Run SQL Scripts. I hope you did. That looks good. Press the Continue button. Now we can see the Add Customer endpoint with all the parameters. Please note the parameter attributes down the right hand side. You have to match these up with the parameters you're going to pass into it. Still in Step 4, click the Add Customer button which will allow us to edit those parameter names. Here we input the column names from the table. These parameter names can be uppercase or lowercase or a mixture, but remember them as you have to pass them in in a JSON string with the exact match or else it cannot pair the parameters up. I'll show you what that means a bit later on when we are testing. I'm going to add them all as lowercase. That's all them entered, now press the continue button. Still on step 4, press the next button. On to step 5, the confusing bit as I said in my last video. Now we go back to our customer's endpoint. No changes there, so press next. Now the get customer endpoint. No changes there either, so press next. Then our new add customer endpoint. That's all good. Note the HTTP status codes here. 200 if the insert was a success, and 500 if there's any errors. I'll leave them as they are and press the next button. Still on number 5, back to the customer's endpoint, press next. Still on number 5, back to the get individual customer's endpoint, press next. And finally, onto the new add customer endpoint. The first thing to change is the HTTP method from get to a post. The next change we need is the allow input media types to JSON. Use the drop down box to select JSON. And make sure the select wrap input parameters button, which will allow our parameters to be specified in a JSON structure as the payload. Press next. On to step six. Press next. And guess what's next? Step eight. And press finish. Now that is installing, Press refresh and the service is stopped. Select it and press start. It's all up and running, ready for a test. Over to the postman. Hang about, I said over to the postman too soon. First, I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. You can use any editor, makes no difference. And I'm going to paste in there a bit of JSON I've already got. Here we can see all the columns of the table we are adding to. Note the case exactly the same as we entered in the API endpoint. Be sure to enter numerics without the quotes and be aware of the length of each column you are inputting. That all looks good to me. Now over to the postman to test. On firing up the postman we can see our two original endpoints. Make sure they're still working first. First of all, all customers. Yep, that gets them all. Then the individual customers. That's working fine. So now to test our new insert endpoint. Hit the plus button at the top. 
change the HTTP method to a post, most important, and then paste in the original URI. Then press the body tab. This is where we enter the input data. Press the raw button and it will open up a tab of text. From the drop down, select good old JSON. Then underneath, paste your JSON from VS Code into this editor. And when you are happy with that, press send. And we get an HTTP code of 200 back. Record has been inserted, just what we want. Now let's see if that new record is there. Over to the individual customers tab and change the customer number at the end to 123, the one we have just added. And yes, it returns the new record. So that's how we test a new endpoint with a post method inserting a new record. Our next one, updating a record, is going to be very similar. Back to Apache to add our next endpoint. We stop the service, select it again, and press redeploy. And how many steps are we going to get this time, IBM? Step 1, press next. Here we go again. Step 2, next. Step 3, next. Step 4, nearly said press next. Whoops. Here we add our next endpoint, update customer. And paste in our update statement, just a simple one this time. An update to the last name with a where clause. Again, I've tested this in run SQL scripts. So press continue. Still on step four, select our new endpoint and change both parameters to LST NAM and CUS NUM. Then continue and next. On to step five for the customers, press next. Step five for the get customers, press next. Step five for the insert customers, press next. And finally, the update customer again, press next as that is all good. On to step five for the customers, press next. On to step five for the get customers, press next. On to step five for the insert customers, get next. Then the update customers endpoint. Change the request method to a put. Then change the input media type to JSON and tick the wrap input parameters like we did for the add customer. Step six, next, and you guessed it. Next is step eight with a summary. Press finish. That is now installing. Press refresh, and the service is stopped. Select it and press start, and it's all up and running. Back to VS Code and the JSON for the record update. Just two entries this time. The last name to Ewins, full custom number, one, two, three. It must be in the same order as we specified for the endpoint. And now over to the postman for a test. Testing time. Back to postman where we can see our three endpoints. Let me add another to test. Press the plus button. Copy the URL from the previous one. Click on the body. Then raw. Then JSON and paste in my JSON string from VS Code. And press send. Whoops! That had just returned all the customers. What's going on? That is because I didn't change the HTTP method to put from the get. That was done for demo purposes on its gov. I change it to a put and send again. Now we get a 200 back. That looks good. Let me execute the get customer endpoint with 123 as the customer number. And here we can see it's changed it to Ewins. Great job. I'll save this new test to my collection. So we now have four endpoints. The two gets, one post and one put. And that's your lot for this video. Next one, we will add a delete endpoint and then go through how we let people know our web service is available and how they can use it. If you need any further details about open source or IBMI, check out all our videos at learning.formaserve.co.uk and the articles we have written for powerwire.eu. I hope you find them useful and let us know if there are any other topics you want us to cover. 
In this video, we covered some significant features and benefits of IBMI. We hope you found this video informative and helpful. Learn from our experts and boost your skills on IBMI. Visit our website today and sign up for our training courses or buy us a coffee to show your support for our creative work. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.